So, Shell, are you ready for us? You're by your favorite yeah, toy. I'm always <laughs> ready as ever. My favorite you toy. Uh, definitely. What an interest in there. Um, there was something that Ajoma said yesterday which uh, prompted me to come out with some figures that might be interesting tonight. And yeah. <laughs> she did mention that we had 20 years of unfettered democracy in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Uh, since 1999. So I went to the archives and brought out these figures for you. At least as the eyes can see, uh, some of the years that Larry has seen and the ones that I have not seen. Uh, from this Are point, you sure, Shil? Don't, uh, don't give yourself too much credit. Oh, yeah. We, we, we will soon return to that subject. We just want the elections to be over. We will return to that subject. So this was a pre-independence uh, election, which, of course, that election, there was uh, uh, the parties were unable to get um, uh, hold of the center. So there was a coalition government at that time. So they came together. It was some kind of um, uh, unity government, that, if you may call it, in 1959. And shortly after, we became a republic in 1964. There was an election. But it's interesting to know that from this time, in 1999, up until this year, that we are presently in is 20 years and if you look at it again from this year 1979 to this year it's another 20 years and so if you remember what happened here and that's when we returned to democracy uh, here after about uh, almost 15 years of democratic rule we came in 1979 with an election we saw Shehu Shagani becoming the president unfortunately another election which happened here couldn't see a government uh, continued in terms of civilian rule and so uh, up until that you remember this year uh, that is another year that is quite interesting in our history 1993 the year where we had an election perceived to be perhaps one of the freest and fairest in nigeria's history unfortunately the mandate never came to be it was annulled in 1993 so uh, there we have it interesting uh, God has been merciful to us, and we also have behaved ourselves very well. <laughs> and remember what happened at some point when we had the Civil War. Nobody ever prayed for that kind of situation to ever happen in this country anymore. So we've had, let's count now, Ladi, 1999, 1, 2003, 2, 2007, 3, 2011, 4, 2015, 5, 1919, 2019, that is, will be the sixth, sixth. one. That's right. If that is successful, hopefully, after this postponement, we'll have clear cloud and we have a good election on Saturday. Who will win that election? That's another kettle of fish entirely. So let me take you to one interesting area that you perhaps also will like to see. So I take you straight back to not so far away. For those of you who are first time voters, I will not take you too far away where Ladi and the his likes uh, in their age bracket can really ruffle your feathers. I'll take you to not so far away 2015 where you can remember vividly at least you can remember Guru Jonathan of the of the PDP at the time and Muhammad Buhari that was a candidate of the APC at the time so look at how these elections uh, the election that year was won and uh, you can see it was largely an election of the north versus the south so PDP had most of the southern states in fact you will say uh, largely all the southern uh, southeast and the South South state were won by the PDP at the time, except for Ekiti, the only state that was won by the PDP in the southwest region of the country. And if you look at it, so firmly, the PDP had a stronghold of Nasarawa Plateau and Taraba State plus the FCT. But the rest of the state, northwest, northeast, cleared by the uh, APC. And if you look at it, uh, about three or so states in the north central, um, Banway State, Kogi State and Kwa State won. It was a sharing, I did tell you, that that not central states are the swing state where they give a sort of balance between most of the parties. Would they, that region, play that role this time around? We'll find out in the coming days. So let's take a look at this, uh, this uh, gentleman right here. Well, 
75 yes, uh, 71 yes, we talked about that. Uh, we will look at this again, Yamila Shiba just 61, there's someone who will be speaking uh, for him right on the program. So if I take you through this figure again, it might clear your, uh, your doubt about some of these issues. But take a look at it, take a picture of it, and maybe study it at your own uh, uh, leisure time. So, but if I take you through and you see how these all plays and pans out, what are the figures telling us? We had 15 million votes for the APC in 2015, 12 million votes for the PDP in 2015. The difference was 2 million votes. That's a big difference. And I told you yesterday, you cannot only win an election just because you have the highest number of votes. You must have the spread. Who will have the spread? That's a big question, isn't it? And we will find out who will win this election. 73 candidates. Uh, Ladi, yeah. uh, the NIP presidential candidate and the national chairman of the party, Eunice Atuejide, did come out today and endorse one of the candidates uh, in this election. So maybe we are down to less than 70 at this time because we've seen someone pulled out. Another woman again has somewhat told us, that, look, don't vote for me. Just go and vote for another candidate. We'll see how that plays out. And the the politics of that. So, Larry and Ijoma, your take on some of these figures. I've improved my mathematics a lot. <laughs> uh, I think uh, what is uh, that's going on well with me with all of these figures is the interest of politics in this figure. So, you know, you can't and I'm getting script. excited. You can't mark your own script. So, you can't start telling us. We will tell you whether you're getting better or not. <laughs> whether whether you've, done, you've done very well or uh, not. But one of, one of the things I was going to raise, thank goodness you talked about, uh, Minister Twitchy which of the new entrants do you think will cause an upset? Because you know you've given us a fantastic map of where APC and PDP were, but I'm going to send you back to do more research to tell us which of those states will be going purple or green or any other color apart from the major. You, you're one of the teachers students don't like to hear and see in <laughs> classroom. Um, I remember my secondary school days. There's some teachers. I remember my mathematics teacher at a time when we were in SS1. We don't like to see her. She gives us too many assignments. You're one of those. Uh, but I will give you that and perhaps we'll make some permutations of how this will play out um, for some of the new entrants. Don't forget some of them. Kingston Mahalo, you know, is from Anambra State. Will he be able to cause an upset in the southeastern region of the country? Feladro Toye is based in Lagos. He's from Ekiti State. Will he be able to cause an upset? We'll find out. The man who lives in New York, but is in Nigeria presently, from Ondo State, Omoyele Shore, another new entrant, those of them who call outsiders in Nigeria's politics, is from Ondo State in the River Rhine region of, the, of that state. Will he be able to cause an upset in the Southwest region and perhaps in some other parts of the country? Well, we'll do some of the permutations and see where their powers in terms of electoral value lies. Hmm. Indeed, uh, show again, one, one, one must not argue with the figures, but it would appear that if you take a look at that map and what you talked about, 25%, you know, just, not just winning hmm. uh, the majority of the votes, but also having to win 25% in two-thirds uh, of the states of the Federation. Given the difference in 2015, it does appear that in many of the states, the two uh, major parties that feature in your map did make 25% in many of those states, leaving mm -hmm. very little room. Otherwise, the, the difference should have been much wider. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll take you back to some of those states. I did tell you that some of the states to watch out for. Uh, Ladi, goodness gracious, you took me back. Uh, you've taken me back here right now. So let me take a look at this critically also. Uh, it does look like they made 25% of votes across some of the states that we're talking about. Um, Lagos, for example, look yeah. at the margin between uh, these, two, uh, these two guys. Um, uh, it's interesting, actually. If you look at Lagos, uh, you see 792 thousand vote for the APC and 632,000 for the PDP. Right. So you see the margin there in Quara. The margin ain't that much if you look at it in the true sense of it. Uh, but if you look at it again in some states like um, Riverstead, it was what they would call in boxing ring, whooping. Uh, when the boxing was so much for the APC here, and the PDP knocked them out so totally here because they can't even make a hundred thousand votes here for the APC. But if you look at Katina, they did the same thing to the PDP and with um, over a million votes, and the PDP couldn't make a hundred thousand votes. So 
basically you see all of these the kind of margin yeah. happen well i think it's time for us to take a break we'll take a break and when we come back some of these uh, some of you who are looking at these two men what they can make out in this election what this election means for nigeria i told you 1999 to 2019 20 years what kind of history are we making as a nation we find out when my partner tonight joins me on this side of the divide where we talk politics and then i'll hand you over to those guys who talk policies and the issues ladia and ijama